Hey beer tubers, it's Ryan back with another episode of San Diego Beer Vlog. Thanks for joining me again. Today I'm going to take a look at Ballast Point's Sea Monster again. This is their Imperial Stout. You can tell from my previous review of this beer, this is a different label and this is a different vintage. This is the latest release, which I believe was either back in January or February of this year. And I believe this beer gets released twice a year. I'm not 100% sure on that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe it comes out a couple times a year. So it's, it's a special release from Dallas Point, who also released their uh, Victory at Sea Imperial Porter that I need to get to. But we're going to take a look at this, see how it compares to the bottle review from 2009. So that bottle's around two years old. This one only a couple months. We're going to see how they compare. I didn't want to do a vertical because these are big beers. I, uh, I forget the ABV. It is 10% ABV. So they're big beers. I didn't want to do them in one sitting. Um, appearance wise, it's not completely black. I get a touch of kind of mahogany notes on the bottom of the glass. It's very dark though. Got a finger of uh, light brown head. Lots of small bubbles. So let's get the nose on this one. The nose on this one isn't as nice as the 2009. There are some similarities. Um, there is a touch of alcohol that I wasn't quite getting on the 2009. But it does have that nice kind of uh, fruit esters going. They just don't go into that really nice cherry characteristic that I got on the 2009. Also, there's a bit more, bit more kind of earthy hops on there. Plus, you get some of the uh, touch of chocolate and coffee coming through as well on the nose. It just, yeah, it doesn't have that age factor, the 2009, where it had some kind of like deeper smelling flavors. But it's still a nice nose. And for a 10% beer, it doesn't seem like it's going to be too sweet as either. So... Let's dig in. Cheers. Mm, it's still it's still really tasty. Really nice. The first thing I know is there's there's more alcohol in the taste, but it still has all those nice flavors that you get that kind of covers it up and keeps the alcohol at a, at a minimum. But I mean, it's a 10% beer. You're going to get some alcohol for a, a fairly new release. Other than that, it's it's kind of similar, just some of the flavors aren't quite uh, intense. The, the cherry character that I keep mentioning, that kind of darker fruit kind of component is there. It's just not as developed as, as the 2009 version. So up front, you get some hops, some of that earthy character. Almost, almost a touch of like a you know woody character, not like a barrel character, but some of those notes. And then come in the big kind of like fruity esters with some of the malts. You get kind of that raisin into plum character that you might get with the double. You get some of that, some some big caramel notes, and then the finish has a, a nice combination of chocolate, like a darker chocolate, and some of that nice roasty coffee notes. And then finishes with a touch of alcohol and a, a touch of bitterness as well. Probably coming from both the hops and the dark malts. And it finishes on the dry side, so it's not a sweet beer at all. I'm sure there's like plenty of hops in here, even though you can't taste it as much because of the malt character involved. Okay, I've been sipping a little bit longer on Sea Monster. Uh, as I drink it more, I start to pick up a little bit more of a touch of like a smoky character in the back end. Touch of kind of like a licorice component as well. Adding within the, the chocolate and the and the coffee notes, and a little bit more uh, of a hot note in there, a little little more bitterness, and then it it finishes still dry, but I get a touch more, a little bit of like a dark chocolate lingering effect on the tongue, but um, just an excellent imperial stout. I mean, for 
a lot of the barrel aged beers get more attention and but I mean there's some really nice non barrel aged imperial stouts out there Old Rasputin um, and Stone IRS are probably my two kind of favorite my top kind of you know beers that I can regularly get for the most part well Stone I can get for the most part uh, Old Rasputin's always around and uh, this one's up there with those beers it's it's not quite is high for me a stone IRS is probably one of my all-time favorite beers so I mean that's kind of my bias towards that beer but I'm gonna give Sea Monster the uh, latest release I'm gonna go A minus on this one it's definitely an excellent beer it's just had I not had the 2009 version um, you know it might have just got a regular A but knowing the potential of this beer and, and how some some age is gonna do with it uh, I, I just know it's going to get better, and I have a few more bottles I'm going to keep around and probably check back in another year or six months. Let's see if I can wait that long because uh, this is a this is a good beer. And it's got all the kind of notes you want on a big imperial stout. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Till next time, please comment, subscribe. Cheers.